for 30 plus years. I've seen every type of child grow up. Instead of giving me what I wanted, she gave me what I needed, which was truth. Don't let emotions win. Let truth win. Do your very best, and you should have a lot of fun while you do it. And the better you get at something, the more fun you're going to have at something. You moms and dads are wired with everything you need to be a parent to a great kid. Welcome to Parenting Great Kids. This is episode number 126, and I'm your host, Dr. Meg Meeker. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to be answering your questions. I'm not going to be interviewing a guest. But periodically, I like to spend an entire podcast simply answering your questions. So please keep sending them in to me. No question is too simple and no question is off limits. Sometimes the harder question, the more fun I have answering it. So please remember to send them in. I also have exciting news and that is I have a brand new free webinar called When No Stops Working. I discuss my Simple Discipline That Works program. You're going to learn five secrets to healthy discipline. Go to meekerparenting.com slash webinar and sign up to listen today. And parents, as a reminder, don't just download the episodes. Click that subscribe button. I need you to join my parenting revolution. Every new episode will automatically show up in your subscribe list, and I promise you won't regret it. Remember, I'd love for you to write us a review on iTunes, so please let us know what you think. The PGK Podcast is on iTunes, and it's also in the Google Play Store and on Stitcher. So no matter where you get your podcast, subscribe today. So parents, thanks for listening. This is episode number 126. Okay, so let's jump into some of the wonderful questions that I've gotten from you. Dear Dr. Meg, my wife and I have four kids. Recently, we've had a lot of disagreements about how to parent and it's driving us apart. My wife allows our four-year-old to sleep in our bed and I move to another room. It just feels like we're not compatible anymore. What should I do? Well, I want to tell you, KB, I'm just going to use your initials instead of your name. Um, Your wife needs to get your four-year-old out of the bed and you need to be back in your bedroom. This is really inappropriate and very unhealthy for your marriage. Not only that, it's bad for your child. Sending your child a terrible message. I feel that you guys need to come together on some big parenting issues, which you know, and tackle these long before you consider separating or getting divorced. I know you're considering divorce, but I think this is, at this point, this is much more harmful for your kids. Here's what I would do. I would tell your wife that there are some parenting things that she's good at and that you want to be sure to support as your kids get older. Then I would ask her to write down four or five parenting issues that she feels are most important to her to um, succeed at as your kids grow older. Then tell her you will support these, but that you need her to support your four or five most important parenting issues. In other words, you have to negotiate with her. And I talk about this a lot, but it's very important for parents to do who are not on the same page with discipline, co-parenting, um, you know, and many other issues. I really encourage you to find a marriage counselor as well to work uh, through your issues. And honestly, I'm not so sure that these are as much parenting issues as either personality ones or marital ones. Here's a question from Amy. Dear Dr. Meeker, I need your advice on my seven-year-old son. I'm embarrassed that he doesn't seem to be, be very brave. I took him to the doctor for a small problem, and he was so afraid of the doctor hurting him, he would not let him touch his foot. He was crying hysterically. He behaves in similar ways when he needs vaccinations and seems to have a real phobia of needles. I need him to be brave. I even told him that I would give him a special treat if he behaved at the doctor. He also doesn't seem to be very brave when it comes to books or movies. He seems scared. And when I wanted to read him a book with scary characters in it, like witches, he says, no, I'm afraid I'm raising a wimp. 
First of all, Amy, I think you're over worried. You have a very sensitive son, and that's fine. You know, when he doesn't want to hear or watch stories uh, with scary characters in him, that's perfectly normal. Many boys his age and even older don't like scary stories or books or movies. They just don't tell you. The other thing, too, is I'm wondering if he's acting a little... Um, less brave when you're around. And the next time he needs something like a vaccination or need to go to the doctor, it would be very helpful for his dad to take him because a lot of times kids sense a parent's concern or worries and they play on that. So I would um, I would try to not let him know that you're worried or nervous and don't talk to him about, um, you know, not being so strong or 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 being afraid. Also, stop feeling embarrassed about him. Start treating him like a, a normal boy. And again, quit trying to tell him to be brave. His feelings will work themselves out on their own and he'll be fine. Uh, my next question is from NP. Dear Dr. Meeker, my 15-year-old daughter went to see her doctor for some hip pain. I recently learned that during the appointment, her doctor talked with her about menstrual cramps and suggested her going on birth control pills. I learned about this while reading her visit summary. I don't want my daughter on birth control pills for cramps. Is this something you would ever recommend for a 15-year-old? Well, NP, you need to find another pediatrician. Her doctor, first of all, should allow you or her father, whoever is accompanying her to the doctor's appointment, to be in the room the first half of the appointment. Of course, when she's being examined, it's natural to excuse a parent from the room when a daughter's 15. But her pediatrician needs to um, hear your side of the story and get your take on what's going on in her life and also to hear some of the concerns you have, which may be very different from your daughter's concerns. Also, a physician should never recommend um, this type of treatment to your daughter alone. Um, birth control pills and other prescriptive pills are a serious matter, and they really are more of your decision than your daughter's decision because she's underage. Uh, there are some instances where we do use contraceptives for menstrual cramp, but the cramps must be so severe that they interfere with a girl's daily life. And um, they can also be a pretty good treatment for endometriosis. In addition, there are girls who have constant bleeding and um, have difficulty getting it under control, and those are other instances where we might use oral contraceptives. But um, giving a girl oral contraceptives at 15 is no small matter, and if I were you, I'd make an appointment with another pediatrician and make sure to go in the room with your daughter. Dear Dr. Meeker, my question for you today is how do I make a situation right? I've come to the realization that I mean, and I am just like my nasty father, and my kids have lived with me being mean for many years. How do I fix it? I've always had a short fuse, and I'm a loving and kind mom, and I always apologize when I don't act nicely to my kids. I was helping my son this morning with his computer. We were both a little frustrated, and I wound up making my frustration clear by the sound of my voice. And then I heard my daughter say to the dog, then I heard my daughter say to the dog, don't ever be a mom. You will regret being a mom. And it hit me. I didn't even realize what I was appearing to be like to my kids. How do I fix this? Um, well, SP, I want to tell you something that you're 75% there. You have recognized that your anger is out of control. You know, whenever we become parents, we bring into our parents parenting what I call our preload. Our preload is all of the experiences that we had as kids, particularly as they rate, uh, as they relate to parenting and being parents. Um, Clearly, when you were a kid, you learned that be that part of being a parent is being mean. This is what your dad taught you. Many times, if parents uh, discipline their kids by yelling, um, parents begin to yell at their kids because that's what they know about parenting. If you had distant parents, all you're going to know about um, a relationship with a parent is being distant. And therefore, when you have kids, you'll be distant with your kids. In other words, we repeat the patterns of 
our parents. And we also work out a lot of our own childhood issues in our parenting. So I want you to realize something. Your issues aren't about your kids. Your anger comes out on them, but what you really need to learn is two things. Where's your anger coming from? And how can you change your pattern of reacting to frustration and make your pattern of reacting very different from how your dad's was? You absolutely can change and you can respond to frustration with your kids very differently. It's going to take some time, but it's absolutely doable. I've seen it. I've seen parents do it many times. The key is to recognize patterns, and when you see them repeating themselves, step away. For instance, if you feel your frustration boiling, starting to boil with one of your kids, immediately walk out of the room, go into the bathroom, shut the door, and take a few deep breaths and say, I'm acting just like my dad, or I'm repeating the same pattern over and I need to change. You do this over and over, and I promise you'll change the way you respond when you're beginning to feel frustrated. Also, I take a hard look at your childhood. Um, Did you ever see your dad not mean? And how did you feel when he was mean to you? And how did did it affect you as a young child? In other words, I'd go back and I'd start to work through some of those feelings. You don't have to do them on a real deep level, but how you felt being raised by a dad who was mean and um, how it made you feel and how you could do things differently for your own kids. I promise you, you know, once you resolve some of those old hurts, a lot of this will just go away on its own. Once you tackle these issues, you'll be well on your way. I know you can do this. But in the meantime, please give yourself some grace. Parents, I hope you've enjoyed this time of me answering your questions. We need to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more of your questions. Parents, now that I'm spending more time at home, I'm finding messes can show up just about anywhere, especially where you least expect them. And that means I need a vacuum that's versatile enough to keep up with it all. That's where my new Hoover Blade Plus comes in. It's versatile, adaptable, and ready for whatever life throws at it. Blade Plus is a real powerhouse in cord-free cleaning. It's engineered with Hoover's Dust Vault technology that captures dust and fine particles as you clean. Messes aren't just limited to the floors. That's why Blade Plus converts to a hand vac with a variety of included tools to get the job done no matter what. Blade Plus is cordless, powered by Hoover's removable, rechargeable lithium-ion battery. Hoover has a whole lineup of cordless cleaners powered by the same battery, So you can simply swap and go from job to job, just like some popular power tool brands these days. Friends, I have a confession. I am a vacuum cleaner junkie. I love good vacuum cleaners because I love clean floors. I have wood floors, tile floors, carpeted floors, and I like to have them all clean most all of the time. That's why a good vacuum cleaner is my friend. And friends, I have the Hoover Blade Plus and I can't tell you how much I love it. I keep it in my kitchen. I grab it off of the charger and I can take it just about anywhere. It's light and it's strong enough to clean the wood floors in my kitchen, the tile in my mudroom, and the thick carpeting in my living room. And friends, I'll tell you, I have grandkids riding scooters up and down my kitchen floors. My husband works in the wood a lot and frequently drags wood chips, dirt, mud, you name it, into our house. And my Hoover Blade Plus can tackle it all. Plus, I love the variety of included tools that I get with the Hoover Blade Plus because I can vacuum my carpets, I can switch out the tools, I can vacuum the corners in my ceiling, and I can even vacuum my drapes and my couch. I just love my Hoover Blade Plus. If you're ready to experience cord-free, adaptable cleaning for yourself, check out the Blade Plus at hoover.com. That's H-O-O-V-E-R dot com. 
It's versatile enough to fit into any cleaning routine. Get your own Hoover Blade Plus today. And don't forget to check out Hoover on Facebook and Instagram. My next question is from Rachel. Dear Dr. Meeker, I know you're an advocate of vaccines, and I am too. In the midst of the race for coronavirus vaccine, there's so much information and probably disinformation out there about vaccines. Can you shed some light on what is true when it comes to vaccines and reputable resources that give good information? Yes, I can, Rachel. You're correct about the plethora of information about vaccines. There are rumors and disagreements not just among bloggers, Christians, vaccine activists, but among physicians. It's a it's a mess. And there are a lot of things that are out there circulating on the internet that are just not true. They scare the heck out of people. Here's what I would do. Personally, I review information put out by the CDC's Vaccine Adverse Effects Report. That's CDC's VAER. And I review Catholic teachings like the National Catholic Bioethics Center. In my experience, Catholics are very good and very fastidious about really researching vaccines when it comes to ethical and moral issues, much more so than Protestants and evangelicals. Dear Dr. Meeker, I was sexually abused as a teenager when I was 15 by my best friend's father. I never told my parents, and now I'm in my late 30s. I've gotten closure, and I've forgiven him. He actually died from bladder cancer, and my first thought was that he was being punished. I've prayed for grace and forgiveness. My questions are, would telling my parents hurt them more than not knowing. They trusted him, and I've never tried to change their opinion of him. They know I don't have contact with his daughter, and then I never talk to him again. I am happily married and have told my husband, what are your thoughts for advice for talking about it with my parents and my sister? We're a very close family. Well, Priscilla, first of all, I'm really proud of you for dealing with the sexual abuse. It's one of the hardest things a person can go through. As far as telling your parents, it's really up to you. As you're making this decision, I would encourage you to ask yourself a couple of questions. What will this change for me? And will this help with my healing? If you feel that it would bring more closure to your healing, by all means, go ahead and tell your parents and your sister. If you feel that telling them is not going to make any difference in your healing, then I would ask, is this something they would really want to know about it about, or is this just going to burden them more? Either way, you can't go wrong. The only thing that I would prepare yourself for is this. If you do decide to tell your parents, be ready for any kind of reaction. Sometimes when parents hear shocking news like this, they tend not to believe their kids. And this can be very painful for kids. On the other hand, your parents may hear what you're saying and feel horrible for you and feel very guilty that they didn't protect you. Um, And they may tell you that they're sorry and then go on and comfort you in your healing. So basically, whatever you want to do is right. But again, the most important thing I would ask myself if I were in your situation is this, is it going to help my healing? If it isn't going to help your fe- your healing, I would just let it rest and not tell your parents. Um, dear Dr. Meg, my relationship with my mother-in-law is very strained. My husband calls her passive aggressive. I'm struggling with my feelings about her and I don't really like her. Whenever she leaves, my husband and I get in a terrible argument. I feel that she tries to pry my daughter out of my arms. For instance, she insisted that my daughter uh, learn to take a bottle when I said no um, because I was still new at nursing. Recently, she told me she understands my daughter can't go to her Santa work function because of COVID, but that next year when my daughter's two, she'll be taking her to that function. Her insistence on taking over doing things with my daughter that I have not approved of have set me off. Whenever she makes me mad, I call my husband and tell him that my mother has upset me and I can't believe she tells me what she is going to do with my daughter. 
One time she told me that she plans to take my daughter swimming at her sister's house, which is two hours away, once she turns one. My mother-in-law has made me feel insecure and protective of my daughter, and my feelings toward her are causing serious problems in my marriage. My husband thinks I'm overprotective and hovering. He reminds me that my parents were absent from my life and they weren't good role models. He thinks my feelings are completely unreasonable. Well, Alicia, unfortunately, you're not alone. There are a lot of grandparents who overstep bounds with their kids or their um, son or daughter-in-laws, and this is completely inappropriate. Your mother-in-law is completely out of line. Your child is yours. It isn't hers. You are responsible for your child's physical, social, and emotional needs, not her. And she's interfering with your marriage, and this is not okay. Your family's needs, and by your family, I mean you, your husband, and your child are your first priority, and they should be your husband's as well. Now, your husband's not going to see the situation as clearly as you do because this is his mother. Um, but what that means is that you need to change what you can. You can't change your husband. All you can do is change you. So stop worrying about what he's doing. First of all, my dear, you are terrible at setting clear boundaries. So the first thing you need to do is go get a copy of Henry Cloud's book, Boundaries, and get to work. You need to learn to put your hand up to your mother-in-law when she's pushing in, and you need to be very firm about this. She has no respect for you, and she's motoring over you. And the next time she does something and crosses some boundaries and tells you she's going to do something that you don't agree with or you don't like when it comes to your daughter, you say something like this. Mom, I really appreciate that you're so interested in doing so many things with our daughter, but it's really important to us that we talk with you about them as they come up because there's some things that I'm just not comfortable with her doing. So, and I know I sound overprotective, but that's just the way I am. And then you're done. You don't say anything more. When she says she wants to Take your daughter two hours away to go swimming. Say, I really appreciate that you want to do that, but I'm not comfortable with it. And then when she gives you pushback, say, you know what? I know. That's just me. Sorry, I can't let her go. When she tries to argue with you, just smile at her. And I know this is hard and say, I know you disagree, but I need to parent the way I feel comfortable parenting. Now, you're going to have to do this many times before she gets the message, but once she does, she'll back off, I promise. Now, never make excuses for the way you feel or the decisions you make. You have no reason to justify yourself to your mother-in-law or anybody. You don't have to be mean to her. Just smile and let her know that anything she does, you have to be comfortable with. And finally, if she really pushes back and gets aggressive, you have to stay away from her for a while. Your husband may not like it, but oh well, you need to tell him that you're tired of arguing with him after seeing his mother and that being separated from her for a while is the best thing for your marriage. Now, your mother-in-law and father-in-law may think that you are a mean, cold, horrible person. Oh, well, they'll get over this. I promise you, once you set some firm boundaries and you're going to feel like a mean person at first, oh, well, then they'll turn around to respect you. They'll come back and they will not take your daughter to do anything you don't want her to do and they'll stop pushing their way in and telling you what what you need to do plus your marriage is going to get a whole lot better and also remember this it doesn't matter whether or not your parents were good role models or what your husband thinks your feelings they are what they are and my friend you need to get tougher Parents, I love answering your questions, so keep sending them in to me. You can email me your parenting questions to askmeg at megmeekermd.com. Again, askmeg at megmeekermd.com. And remember, friends, 
don't forget to sign up for my brand new webinar, When No Stops Working. I will give you five secrets to healthy discipline. Go to meekerparenting.com slash webinar. So until next time, parents, always remember, great kids are raised, not born. Hey, this is Bobby, producer of Meg Meeker's Parenting Great Kids podcast. Thanks for listening. And because of your dedication to raising great kids, Dr. Meg's Parenting Revolution has grown to over 3 million downloads. Head on over to Facebook and Twitter and follow at Meg Meeker MD and check out what's new at MegMeeker.com. And while you're there, sign up for the newsletter to stay updated and get information about giveaways. Don't forget to share the podcast with other parents. Subscribe so you won't miss anything. And leave us a review so we know how we're doing.